million. How many people speak Norwegian in the world? I got no clue. So, anyway, so what we're going to be doing here is that uh, my name is Stuart Walsh. I'm a professor here in information security. And one of the groups I lead in research is called the Information Security Management Group. So I teach mainly at the masses level how you manage the information security function. Um, the important issue in security, believe it or not, often is not having the right answers, it's having the right questions. Uh, some of you I don't know. Uh, how many here have saw Rania River Doctor? And in that you have uh, Nisa, Lafrenodo, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I confess. I always go around asking why, why. So what I'm going to do here is you have a poem in the beginning that talks about the security issues. On the back, if you turn it over, you have the criteria that we'll be judging if you have a question. You don't have a question, you don't have a problem. We only have three prizes. Ideally, we want to have it. This seminar is supposed to be for bachelor students, master students, and doctoral students. So it would be the best bachelor students, the best master students, the best doctors. Right now, I see no doctoral students or master students here, but um, they usually come late. And the professors, even more. We have no presence for them because they always come late. Um, and this is something that Simon and I, Simon in the game program, are working on. We want to be able to judge you as students in the future on your questions. So I have in my exams, when I have it, the students actually have to formulate a question. So you get marks on the question you write, which is helping me a lot because I take that the good questions and I use it to, to use in the next year's course. So always in my course, you always have to ask a question. So, any questions about the question? There should be questions. Read the uh, read the thing. All right, I have a question. What does this ink mean? On that, can be judged by that. Anybody here speak Chinese? 16. Um, 16 means short and to the point. We seem to say that a lot here in Norway. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't see what things to be after all. All right, any other questions? Any questions from that? There is something that you should look at as security people and privacy people. Read the, um, after the criteria, there's a line there. Turn around and you look. So you can, can you read this one here? Uh, also write down your question below and pass it to the monitor. Uh, if you like, please post the question for um, write in your name and contact information. Or you can just send my anonymous. Yes, hello? Yeah, any questions about that statement that you should think of? What does it mean for semi anonymous? Thank you. And what do you need are personal information? Or contact Very good. Exactly, the type of questions you have to ask in cyberspace. You're out there, people are asking for information all the time, they're stealing value from you and giving you back an app that doesn't work now and then. So Google. They do go evil, but they do a lot of mistakes. What does semi-anonymous mean? It's very difficult. If you write down a question, how can you be anonymous in this situation? Does anonymity exist? That's why I put the joke symbol there and I said semi-anonymous because if you write down the thing, we have not designed the system so you can actually submit something anonymously. It's my own, right? 
that's an example. And then, of course, Laura, that's some setting up while we're waiting for the 15 minutes. We have some professors and coming, whatever. Um, we are able to be anonymous in, the, in China. Uh, no way. <laughs> The anonymous, and also they uh, they block different sites. Had, did you have karaoke there? No, the um, other one. Though, yeah. They had some. They had live music on some days, but uh, <laughs> not every day. Not when we were there. But, uh, yeah, it was a nice um, bar. Traditional Chinese dances and all the more, but uh, it's kind of cool. You just walk out, uh, walk by like a uh, hundred people just having their dance, and all uh, different ages from uh, young people to uh, program called the Seek to the Future program run by here in Norway so far, and they will sponsor students from Norway China for two weeks, yeah. and they will pay your plane, 
Yeah, they will tell you everything. The plane, your stay, your food. If you're a second year. It was a great experience, but I will tell you all about it in five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Presented here. Is it using obscure VPN popular in uh, China? You don't have access to like Netflix or Facebook? It's very difficult to me at this time to say what is popular. I was not there to, to do that type of research. But uh, they do have an active situation where <coughs> the, the internet is monitored. And how you do that is like anything else. You, just, you have an IP address, you can block it. It's not magic how you can change it. Right? Yeah, but, uh, there have to be some people in China, living in China, which are, who are very educated in, uh, in uh, matters of uh, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. You should be able to access various sites and know about these uh, various VPNs that the Chinese government aren't blocking. And uh, do you think this is uh, a common? Uh, do you think this is how uh, most people are to ac would access uh, sites that are blocked by the US government? Do you think uh, this is uh, a normal way to try and bypass the restrictions placed by the government? Mm -hmm. So, and if so, as a professor, the term normal. Just the VPN and suddenly it was on Facebook. It doesn't see very complex series of uh, actions, and yet the and yet the, the Chinese government seems completely ignorant to this kind of uh, very easy bypass. Well, to understand cyberspace and understand a country of 1.3 billion people and the size of this is a lot of security and a lot of that in China. Or based on yeah. So it's estimated in that uh, in terms of monitoring. But, uh, but don't forget, look, what, how many people are they monitoring? Yeah, but uh, how difficult is it to, to start a new VPN? If, if this seems like the kind of information that in a nation like, like China would spread very quickly. People would start just telling other people that, oh, I just accessed this VPN that uh, the Chinese government aren't blocking, and then I can access these websites and these websites, and they can track me. And then they say, oh, I'll just access that, access that one. And suddenly more and more people start using it. And then the, maybe then the government finds out that uh, 2,000 people are using this VPN, and then they block it, and then they have to try and find a new one. And then people start uh, uh, trying to make various different VPNs and distributing their traffic uh, over various VPNs. Uh, this seems like a system that uh, in, seems like people would figure this out uh, by themselves, you know? Like in, uh, in North Korea. Uh, near the border, people are try, uh, shipping uh, mobile phones over the border, so people can access things uh, and talk to people outside of uh, uh, Korea. So, you mean what? I was talking about. I don't know. So what you're getting at is what the basic principles of information security and security in general. Um, uh, if, if there is and what it is, is that what, you, what we're suggesting here is that security by nature is not a binary concept. Systems are not secure and insecure. And that uh, you have to manage, I come from the information security management group, and you have to manage resources and as we say in common everyday English, you have to pick your fight. 
Um, and that's what's going on in the world. Information security managers, uh, we know, and I know technologically, how to make systems secure. But I do not know how to make systems secure enough with the money I'm getting. So security management is about dealing with industry partners um, and uh, so that is I think very special also and uh, third one is um, that we have actually a, a visitor here also from NTNU um, Harald uh, he's an institute uh, sorry department leader of uh, cinematics um, so welcome thank you very much and um, Maria can sit over here or <laughs> um, Yes, so um, I think uh, we only have 45 minutes. Um, uh, very happy. Um, Loris will give us a presentation in the beginning, and then I'm very much looking forward to a discussion afterwards. That our uh, yeah, that we're going to moderate. Then I guess Stuart in particular, who has been launching this project for us. Yeah, uh, thank you. So uh, my name is Loris, uh, and I'm currently on my last year uh, in my bachelor in um, information security. And uh, in the summer, I went to uh, China through Huawei's Seeds of the Future program, and that's what the speech will be about. So I will start off uh, by um, talking about Huawei. Uh, many of you maybe have heard of Huawei before. So these are the primary sectors or the business areas that Huawei work within. So can, from the pictures, can any one of you guess which uh, business areas they work with. That's working. Hmm? That's working. Yeah, telecommunication, that's one. And uh, the picture on the left. <laughs> yeah, consumer market. And the last one. Okay, enterprise. So that's their, that's a three main uh, where they get their income from. The biggest one. Uh, it's not their consumer market, but their um, their telecommunication, and they have over sixty percent of their revenues generated from this area. So uh, over to the program, uh, the Seed for the Future program is an international uh, uh, international program uh, where over hundred schools from thirty six countries are involved, and since two thousand eight, there have been over thousand students visiting uh, Chen Chen in China. And it's the second time uh, Norwegian students are invited to go there. Also, um, our group, when we went to China, was with uh, Swedes and some people from Iceland as well. So um, they, uh, they mix you with both Chinese people, but also Thank you. 
IKT in our Norwegian, right? Uh, also, the goals of the poem is uh, to learn about Chinese culture and how to work, uh, and, uh, how to cooperate when you have different backgrounds to culture. And also, between the students, between the students and, and After our course in uh, Beijing, we went to Shenzhen, which is uh, a city just outside of uh, Hong Kong. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's only a third, it lives uh, 20 million people there. And the Huawei campus is located. Fail, you would get a bad grade, obviously. So, uh, one thing about Chinese is that there are different ways of pronouncing words, like in any, any language, but there are actually four different ways of pronouncing a word, and the way you pronounce it will change the meaning of the word. So, I have these three A's here, and I'm going to pronounce them for you. Uh, the sign above the A describes how, or the, the, the symbol above the letter, describes how you're supposed to pronounce it. So the first A has a flat sign above it, which is flat A, and it sounds like this. A, kind of flat, right? Next one has a rising line, which is A, and the one in the middle has a V, one kind of shape, which is A, and the last one is just A. So to show you the difference, uh, we have the word ma in Chinese, which can mean many things, depends on the pronunciation. <coughs> so, uh, ma means mother, but ma means horse. So there's easy to confuse things there if you don't know how to say this. So I have this sentence, sentence down here, which is ba pi ma ren, which means the eight horsemen. But if I were to say ba pi ma ren, that would be the eight mother men, which doesn't make sense <laughs> at all. <laughs> also, we learned some symbols, and the symbols are trying to um, represent what the symbol means. Some of them are a little bit far fetched, so this is the traditional Chinese symbol for horse. Um, if you use your imagination, yeah, you might see a horse there, but it's kind of, kind of hard. Anyway, um, this is uh, the symbol for person and the symbol for fire. And to make a word in Chinese, they combine the
the different symbols. So I have a question for you guys. What feeling do you think this is? This is a feeling. A feeling? A feeling. Yeah. A fever. Like you have high fever, you know? Uh it's slow spouse, but more like a like a feeling, like a mood. Angry. 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 Exactly. So uh, that's the basic uh, of how they build their language. So this is our classroom and our teacher, the other students. Uh, and we had also some drawing, and I made this. So the artist. I did not do the uh, Chinese uh, sign, though, but uh, I did the drawing. It was fun. So um, that was the language part. We also had a lot about the information and communication technologies, and we learned this in Shenzhen at the Huawei campus. And the Huawei campus is ginormous. There, in Huawei total, it works 170,000 people worldwide. But at the campus alone, it's 70,000 people. So that's equal to Jövik's population times two and then another 10,000 people. So let's say the Huawei campus was stationed in Norway, it would be the sixth biggest city in Norway. So yeah, it was kind of big. The cafeteria alone hosts um, or has capacity of having 10,000 people to eat there at the same time each day. And there's a hotel, a community center, and a hospital on the campus. And also they have their own college, which is actually bigger than High school in Jövik. Yeah, so this is the hotel, and this is the F building. We didn't, that's the research and development building. We didn't get to see them research and develop, but we did get to see the exhibition hall in the cellar, in the basement. So here's a 4G base station and then the tennis. And this is the cafeteria, which goes on forever, and it doesn't actually capture the whole it's just like a yeah it's it just, it's more bigger than the picture says so uh in class we learn more about huawei some history about um about huawei how they developed through the years what their next strategies will be stuff like that we learn about their products their phones um some of their telecom technologies and one thing we learned a lot about was their telecommunication infrastructure. How the different, what different components you have in the different uh, networks. For instance, for instance, like the LTE networks, uh, the 3G network, and the GSM network. What components do you need to, to have such network? So I will show you an example of this. And this is how uh, 4G, uh, what components that are involved in 4G uh, technology. So. There's the base station, E node B, which you send your signal to. That's the first one that reacts. Um, and then there's, in the middle, in the core network, they decide if your packet is a call to someone or if you're trying to access uh, the, the internet. And the last one, IMS, is for uh, voice over LTE. Um, we don't have that in Norway yet, but some countries do. Um, yeah. Huh? Coming up some of It's coming up. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's some of what we learned. And they went into more details what the different component names are and stuff like that. And in the future there will be fewer components because of virtualization. So that's another important fact uh, we learned. So the E node B is actually two components in one component, uh, for instance. So this is our classroom, and in front of you can see the uh, Algerian group, which was also there. We met them a few times. Um, and we had a lab session. And the lab uh, in Shenzhen is kind of like the lab we have here at Cisco, except with um, wide area switches and routers. They, they have some switches and routers labs too, like we have here, but just on a bigger scale. We learned to set up voice over IP and configuring 3G and 4G. So I will show you how we did the voice over IP. Uh, the con here is some kind of um, a wide area network router. So our task was to put a lot of commands into a command line like in, into Putty and to set up uh, IP telephony for, 
for um, the home gateway, basically. This is us at the lab. Um, you might be able And the other have the resource, and then you agree, and you make the deal. Put put that spot there. But in China, so many people with the resources, with the money, you the relation before you do the contract. If you don't like the other part, you don't do the deal, basically. So, uh, and that's not the not many Westerners know this. So. That's why you should learn Chinese to build this relation with the other part. And also, this is what Huawei is doing with us as students as part. Uh, six girls, I think. So there are girls there. And then Norwegian. One girl. <laughs> 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 so some of us we didn't actually finish at all. So we wrecked them pretty hard. <laughs> uh, yes, in Shenzhen we also went to see the cultural center. Yeah, that's yeah. In Shenzhen we also went to see the cultural museum because Shenzhen is such a new city. As I said earlier, it's only a thirty-year-old city with twenty million people. So in a short amount of time, a lot of people have moved there. So it's like a melting pot between all different Chinese cultures. And uh, we went to a museum to try to experience all of them. So there was some show, some um, other things around. It's very interesting. Yeah, uh, electronics uh, is cheap in China, but you never know what you get. So, um, but this one was pretty easy to sort out. <laughs> and we ate a lot of different foods. Uh, some of them are great, some of them are not so great, and uh, some food was uh, very interesting, maybe over time. This is the big brain. So, uh, what I didn't learn Chinese fluently, I, uh, of course, <laughs> but I got a good foundation for learning more. You learn the basic, and then you can build on top of that. Uh, learn a lot about Chinese culture and, and the differences. Learn ICT at the Huawei campus, and of course, I learned a lot about Huawei. So, uh, if you uh, are interested in ICT and networking and telecommunication and interested in traveling and see and interested in China, you should apply for this um, this program. And if you do want to apply. You should talk to uh, 
Professor Dr. Wise Dean of Education. <laughs> <laughs> There will be a prize for the best question, so that's my speech. Oh my God. Do you want to monitor the, the questions? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you are first, Deborah. I'm first. Um, oh, thank you. Um, that was very interesting. <laughs> Especially the uh, pronunciation part. Um, I wonder how this um, or what you I think most people are scared of Huawei because it's and you think there's a backdoor and everything. So I guess that's maybe a thing, but, but that's not confirmed, right? So, but, but uh, from <laughs> that, I don't know. I don't know really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, how does this trip kind of change your pursuit new on Huawei? And uh, did it, did it, what is, uh, if you know some, still something about it before? How did it change your view on your uh, uh, Huawei on Chinese companies or Chinese technology? Uh, I think the, the program built trust uh, a lot. Um, Huawei wants to be trusted, and that was something they they really uh, emphasized that the students should trust Huawei. Of course, they want to sell their products, but they they, they want people to trust them. So I trust Huawei more now. Afterwards, um, I also I learn I know a lot about I know uh, know more about Huawei now than I did before. But that's that's kind of how my less less skeptical to Huawei. Well, I'm Josh, yeah, here we have one. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, the the consumer market. For uh, IT services like uh, like internet services and uh, telephones and so on, it's still growing rapidly in China, right? Do you foresee any of us bachelor students get exporting our our expertise to China? Do you think that a lot of new places of employment are going to open up in China in the future? So that maybe will move uh, move to a future where uh, Norway is, is exporting expertise to Chinese the Chinese market. Are you are you talking about like um, um, expertise? You mean um, educated people going to China, right? Yeah, pe maybe people or, have, uh, who, have who have gotten their education here at uh, <laughs> this university, and uh, then and then when they go to apply for a job, maybe find uh, a new job uh, at some uh, company in China. I I think that would be possible. Stuart works uh, twenty percent at Huawei, and uh, and it's a uh, International, um, it's an international company, and what I have um, experienced uh, was that there was a lot of different people from a lot of different nations. Uh, so yes, it's possible. How international will that be? Will I have to learn, will we have to learn Chinese in order to interact with uh, the company itself, or are the people who work at Huawei very international? Um, most people, or some people, uh, I, don't, I don't know for everyone, but what I've experienced is that some of their employees know English. I, I guess it depends on where in the company you're working, but 
this time he didn't understand Chinese, and they just kept meeting without him uh, understanding anything. So, but but uh, I I don't, I'm not sure. You know, it depends on in what parts of the company you work in. I, I think because uh, yeah, that's what I think. But I would also, but it would be for all the other stuff. You uh, the uh, uh, experience and help you in your further studies at this oh. Um, there wasn't much about information security, as I said earlier, but uh, I think it helped me to decide what I want to do and what I not want to do later on. Mm -hmm. uh, you get it? Right. Yeah. What about culture and what about the technology part? Mm -hmm. uh, the first one about the culture, did you, you said something about uh, they are having a bit of a difference, a uh, different business culture in China. Yeah. As we see more and more companies grow bigger and bigger in the Western Hemisphere, do you have to ask for uh, building a deal or making a deal without some the relationship part? Uh, I would say it's you know, the guy you're de doing business with. But the thing in China is that a contract isn't necessarily, or a contract is something during the process, which makes it more important to be on the same page to have a relation. Learn how to set up 4G uh, network node and telephoning technology. Yeah, uh, they they spoke about that were invented uh, and uh, how. Some for the other. He actually mentioned Vmax as uh, dying, uh, but he configured that based Vmax base station. So uh, it's an LTE and an LTE advanced instead. Thanks. Good presentation, Mother. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't know why you were chosen among the students. How to form a student group in China. I, uh, there were only two people applying uh, from the high school, uh, from the school, and I don't know how you chose people. Did you do it, Stuart? Or yes, I can comment on that yeah. later on. Um, basically, you make a, a, a letter why you want to go, and we judge it on the, the content and the clarity of the letter. In the content here, specifically when it came to Lawrence, it had to do with the fact that he built on what he learned from the uh, cybersecurity officer for Germany coming to your way and presenting the presentation on, on DNA in building DNA into your network about security. So he was referring to that. So it was more that he was showing that he could take some knowledge and then add to it. What we're interested to see is that if we give you some information, then how you process information and add to it. So it has to do with that notion, it's what you write. It's a one page. It's about a one page uh, email. Yeah, about one page. But that's what the judge was. It was done on the written text. It wasn't actually done on the grade. It was done on the written text. We should put the grades in, but uh, okay. what next year? <laughs> well, with two applications, is a bit different. But uh, yeah, but I have to fight for these from NTU. You know, I mean, right now. But now we're going to be NTU next year. So. I'm sure that if you guys submit it, and I'm on the judgment committee, that you know we will judge on criteria, not location. We're supposed to. I mean, that's the whole idea behind this merger. It's not supposed to. Physical location is not supposed to make the difference. It's your skills, and that's the message you want to get out. That's what China will get out. It's our skills. It makes no difference the product comes from China or whatever. It's the criteria and the way we build it that's important, not where it comes from. Answer your question? Yeah. Just to 
question then? The price the question, back. obviously. Oh, there. Was it, yeah, uh, based on um, your experience and uh, in both the um, cultural and uh, technology, uh, do you think Norway could learn from that? Uh, maybe apply uh, some of the things you experienced in that. And so, uh, what would be the easiest to, uh, to do in Norway? I um, I think maybe how uh, the, the teachers taught the students uh, could be interesting to see uh, how it works in Norway. Uh, maybe not on a college and university level, but more in <laughs> primary school, for instance. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that, that's the, yeah, I mean, um, the language, that's only <laughs> language teaching, I have to... Uh, uh, say that um, the teachers were were more or less uh, like our teachers when they taught us uh, ICT solutions. <laughs> um, yeah, um, can I compliment? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, what happens in the actual exercise at the last? Day, he has to write a one pager telling Hilwe what they did good and what they did bad. And one of the things that I did is I sort of, because I was there, I was able to take them around to other things. And and I took him into the training session there, and he explained how they use uh, tools to teach their employees. You can comment on that one. Yeah, uh, that was actually quite interesting. interesting. Uh, they. Uh, Is um, dark web or crypt, cryptographs, uh, the crypto nets in China? I don't think I could answer you on that one. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, the only thing I know is that we use VPN, so I guess more people could use VPN too. But Stuart, maybe, has something on that. As I say, it's very. It, it's quite interesting when people travel and give reports about traveling, and I think I tried to point this out to um, the students. Like they came from Beijing to Shenzhen, and how different is Beijing from Shenzhen? Very different. And a lot of people don't understand the diversity in China. I mean, it's presented as a large thing, but there's many, many things going on. So there's quite a lot of diversities in the managing diversity. 
as to how they're dealing with these types of um, controlling and monitoring the network, they're putting in as much resources as they think is necessary. That it's a, it's a political question, but that's and what is necessary, of course, that's a political decision. We're talking about people that are traveling from outside, but also inside China. Yeah. How popular is the situation? Yeah, I'm saying that is very difficult. Experience say on the, the physical security. How do you see walking around often? There was a lot. Every every street corner there was a, at least one. I'm powered down. They're sitting in these. Uh, they're just hanging out there. They, 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 they use, I would say, proportionally more manpower on their security solutions. As to how much that's a management issue. How much should we spend on security? How many police officers is Norway need? Do you have an idea? How much resources should we give to NSM? PST? Depends on the control group. Depends on the problem, right? So going back to the issue, I think they matter. Weapons. So, the, as someone has been in China for a long time, do you see this changing? Because, uh, as far as I can tell from the news, it seems like China is taking two steps forward and then one step back in terms of moving towards a more, you know, liberal and free society. The, uh, the need for control as it is now. But the philosophy is, and they always teach these. I, I gave you a poem. You can read the poem. Um, the Chinese want to feel secure. Technological change <coughs> creates uncertainty. And different societies have to manage different levels of uncertainty. Right now, they have the economic uncertainty. So, a lot of the focus now is actually just making sure that everybody has enough food to eat and everybody's doing things right. And that's what they're really concerned about. And they, they realize that if you take resources from that, it's going to affect that. So the amount of sec information security is going to be the economic change. So it's, it's one step forward, two steps back. Yes. That was not my question. Lawrence is the question. Okay. Yeah, I think next was here, then we're back to a deal. So Okay. Okay. Um, Trivial question. Um, do you consider buying a, a POA as your next mobile purchase? Or uh, I actually uh, got a. Uh, what we call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, 
when you went there, you were interested in the Chinese culture. So, uh, were the Chinese interested in our culture when you talk with them? Yes, yes, uh, very much so, actually. Um, we went out uh, to have so, a couple of years uh, sometimes, and uh, when you're from Europe in China, people really uh, want to talk to you. So we got invited over to everyone. Yeah, there. Yeah, and some people took pictures with us and yeah. stuff like that. So, but I think as you went that Facebook with the fans, did someone Chinese was interested in looking at it? Like, uh, like, like using the Yeah, when well, you using the and uh, connected you and uh, things like that.
If we don't, uh, it, it won't start. But there's, there, is a, there is a gray area of corruption here. You know, if you start. Well, I think we have some that need to go yes. uh, to the house. So I have to give so, the prize too. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm actually <laughs> giving away. It's not every week like this, yeah, but right. we still have. Lawrence is here. You know where he, we know where he lives. We know what he did last <laughs> summer. <laughs> we know what he did last summer, and we know where he lives. So uh, you can always ask the questions that way. That's okay. I, I think I have enough information. You both ask questions. The ones that are doing that I see. So I have enough information to make a judgment on the prize. Right That's okay. So I announce the prize, or should yes, I? Yes, please. Um, so um, the criteria for the questions was relevance, succinctness, human emotions, answerability, engagement, and others. Um, What do you want? What do you have? 